Sunroof on 102.7 WMOM 924, 24 minutes after 9 o'clock on a Thursday morning. It is January 5th. Uh, welcome to it. It's Chris here on The Morning Show. And Mark uh, Patinato is in the studio with us. Uh, Mark, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Thanks for coming in. Mark with West Michigan CMH. Uh, Mark, an ACT or ACT coordinator there. And over the next few minutes for our listeners, both on the air and as well online, we're going to be talking about ACT and how important it is uh, to the area right here, to our listeners, uh, to those that uh, really need to be able to reach out and have this at their fingertips uh, and uh, and can do so. We'll share the 800, the toll-free number, but we'll talk a little history of this too. And I think that's where I want to start, if that's okay, Mark. Uh, and uh, we, we call it ACT or ACT. Where do, what do you say as as it would be? It's it's called a, um, act or act but it's it's the same thing okay and take us through the history of this if you don't mind for a moment so in the 1950s when um, the state hospitals were going on in the state of Michigan there was about 15 of them uh, the federal government came in and said well we want to release everybody and they released you know 15,000 people in the state of Michigan or so mm-hmm. um, they didn't have anywhere to go. Uh, they didn't have resources in the community. So what they found were individuals were ending up back in the state hospitals, filling or back in the community hospitals, filling up the beds that they had there. So psychiatrists in Wisconsin developed a team called Program of Assertive Community Treatment, or PACT, okay. which turned into ACT, or Assertive Community Treatment, what we know today. Um, it left... Wisconsin or stayed in Wisconsin, but it came to Grand Rapids soon after. And Grand Rapids, uh, once it came to Grand Rapids, the people who brought it there disseminated it throughout the state of Michigan. And and, and a big issue that you hinted on just a moment ago was that, uh, and and we and we tend to still have a little bit of that issue today when. Uh, when uh, those that uh, have been uh, have been locked up for a while or short term or even long term are released, uh, we need to be able to provide services for them. And so back in, in the early stage of this, to have 15,000 plus people just out there uh, trying to make it on their own, that had to be crucially difficult, it, almost impossible. So what they were finding is when they were released from the hospitals and these hospitals were closing down, Many of these people were returning back to the state hospitals, either a breaking into them and living in the rooms that they had lived in. Wow. Okay. And um, mm-hmm. so they would end up in jail for, you know, trespassing or mm-hmm. breaking and entering, even though they didn't belong in jail either. They they just needed a place to stay. And, and they wanted that safety net, they, that safety, safe environment that they were used to at, at that point. Correct. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's the life they knew was living in. It's, many of them had lived in there for 15, 20 years at a time. Let's fast forward. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Mark, AC, ACT coordinator at West Michigan CMH. And let's fast forward to today, because as I mentioned just a moment ago, we still we still deal with this issue, right? Uh, uh, with uh, with those that are incarcerated and, and they need to be able to transition. And we we talk about it, but there are actually uh, now services available out there. Uh, let's fast forward to today. And, and what is that like? So our, our program is specifically intended for people with what we call a severe and persistent mental illness. It's a uh, typically schizophrenia, bipolar, and schizoaffective disorder. Um, if they have one of those three diagnoses, they typically meet criteria for the ACT team. Can have other disorders, but those are the top three that uh, are assigned to the team. So they come in through our access and referrals get made to to my team and mm-hmm. we as a team decide if if they're going to be join the ACT team. Okay. And 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 just as we mentioned a couple of minutes ago uh, that we, we we focused a lot on the incarcer- incarceration side of it, but this is something that uh, doctor referrals at this point not necessarily has to be somebody that is uh, has been locked up a criminal record in this sense, right? It doesn't have to be um, there, there's many times where there may be somebody 18 to 22 who's experiencing their first uh, psychotic break, or okay. it can be somebody later on in life that has had some criminal interaction as well. What is the, uh, I'm sure there's enough statistics out there, and I'm not necessarily looking for numbers, just more of a uh, y- your opinion and generalization in regards to this. 
where when on the one hand you have uh, somebody that has the ability to um, uh, seek help and to be able to receive help versus that person that is just you know wandering out there how much of a drastic difference is that rehabilitation well for the for the individual that's just wandering it's it's really um there's a, there's a way to help people that are wandering there's you know there's ways through the court that we can do that and i have seen individuals have significant life improvement through that and it's 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 there's great programs out there that can help what about uh, health uh, in regards uh, to to act? Uh, do we do we have um, you know because obviously there's the mental side of it, but can can we see uh, f uh, physical issues that happen too? Oh, typically yes. So we'll we'll see somebody who may be experiencing some psychosis, and the, typically they'll self medicate with alcohol or drugs, and then they'll start experiencing physical health issues related to that, and. You know, there's just a whole bunch of issues related to those types of things. All right, then, and if you're just joining us, we're talking with Mark with, from West Michigan CMH. Then let's take, if you don't mind, telling us how important ACT is uh, to people this day and age, and then how can we, uh, how can we take that first step? So ACT is is very important for individuals with a serious mental illness it uh, our goal is to decrease hospitalizations decrease the use of the emergency room decrease the number of contacts with law enforcement and decrease homelessness okay. um, so crucially important i mean you hit on so many levels that would uh, you know, when we look at our communities, and, and we do, it, it's not just a big city issue. It is a rural community where we, rural communities that we, we see individuals. And, and, and from, you know, from our observations, we're thinking, well, what is out there? But there is something out there like this. There is, Chris. And, and if there's anybody out there that is, that is in need of these types of services, all you have to do is contact our office and and get in get involved in the services and we can do our best to get you get you the assistance you need one question after talking with you for a few minutes though is um you'd mentioned that 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 somebody goes through kind of an evaluation process or you know for this what is that like is it is it going to be difficult for them because obviously we don't want to put roadblocks and challenges in in front of somebody that needs help or wants to get help what is that process like no, it's not typically difficult for the individual. It's they they would attend a an intake was what we call it through okay. our access department, and after that it's it's pretty simple. They would attend an appointment with a doctor, and then usually the referrals made to ACT, and then we would make a decision if if they're going to join the team or not. But overall, the to get services is pretty simple. Okay, do we see? Let's bring it home here for a moment. You serve Mason, Oceana, Lake Counties. Do do we have people going through these um, symptoms right now in in our communities? Yes, um, actually, in all three communities, uh, we have about forty to forty five consumers on the ACT team that we serve on a regular basis. Okay, um, we are heavily involved in those cases, and you know the goal is least restrictive as possible, right? So, we typically see people once a week but there are times where we are in their homes five days a week or seven days a week to make sure they're getting the medications they need and staying on top of the treatment and health care too physical health hmm. we have a nurse assigned to the team that addresses the physical health we have psychiatrists assigned to the team that address the psychiatric portions of, of their health what about uh, here's a question that that as you as you were talking there that that came up uh, in my mind is are people able to, and I use the word recover, I, I don't know if there's a different word that you would use and your team uses, but um, it sounds like uh, some of these diseases that, that, that you're dealing with is, is lifelong diseases in most cases, or can we actually give enough attention to these individuals to, to, to wean them off, to get them into a better spot? I think what I've seen over my nine or 10 years of doing this, Chris, is 
what we see is a reduction in symptoms, right? Okay. As people stay on their medications, their, re their symptoms reduce, they start living a sustainable life, they start getting the community inclusion, the community involvement, and they start becoming a productive member of society. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing. That's what we all want to do, right, Chris? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think this, this sounds like a program to, to get uh, people on track in regards to that. So my last two-part uh, two 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 part question, I guess, would be, um, do we see that uh, people that are in need are the ones that are reaching out, or is it the friends, family members uh, taking that step? What is the, what is that like? Typically, for our team, it's usually the family members that are kind of at at the end of the ropes. They don't know what to do, um, so they reach out. We're heavily involved in educating not only the individual that we serve, but also the family members that are involved because they're a crucial piece to this individual's recovery, and that's. That's what the focus is on, is on the recovery of the individual, but also rebuilding the bonds with the family yeah. and making sure that they have the supports they need after they leave ACT to a lower level of care. All right. And one more clarification. Is it is it a certain age uh, group that, that you're focusing there at West Michigan CMH, or is this pretty much open to everybody? Uh, ACT serves individuals 18 and older. Okay. It's, it's an adult caseload. All right. And uh, you can take that first step either from a family member uh, by calling 800-992-2061. We put this on our Facebook page above the video that's uh, that's live streaming now uh, so that that number is, is handy. Uh, but uh, And if you're going through that uh, and those symptoms, uh, and uh, and Mark, if you don't mind, uh, uh, and I know this every every disease that people have, uh, and I, and I clarify that as a disease because it is, I would assume it is, is that there's a lot of different symptoms that people go through. But is there just a, a handful of, 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 of common indicators that you might want to share today that that's like, okay, this might be where you need to give us a call? Sure. Typically, you might have somebody that's. Um in the age range of 18 to 22 and they might be the outgoing athlete that's just graduated from high school um, within the past few years all of a sudden they start withdrawing um, you, you start noticing some bizarre behaviors okay. you might want to reach out and get that individual some help or at least start talking to people because he may start experiencing some psychosis um, it is a little bit later for females typically the 22 to 26 range okay. um, and again, it can come later than that, but that's typically the age ranges for those uh, populations. All right. And you have had success stories too, haven't you? Absolutely. I have had success stories. And it's, and that's, you know, the, the small successes are, are what we strive for. And it's, it's a team success. And we really are grateful to see those. And to see the consumers succeed is, is wonderful. All right. Uh, and uh, let's hope for a lot more successes uh, with those individuals that you're currently working with or anybody out there that needs West Michigan CMH and that help in regards to the uh, the ACT program, ACT, uh, is uh, is available. And it's it's been available for, you said, about, what, five years now? Well, ACT has been available since the 1980s okay, yeah, in, yeah. in Mason County here. Okay. But uh, in Michigan, it's been here since the 70s uh, across the state. But um, I've been here about three years. So. Okay. All right. So, uh, so Mark and his team is available and ready. And I appreciate you, Mark, coming in and talking about this because it sounds like, uh, you know, and again, I said this a few minutes ago that, uh, we don't have to just uh, pass by people and wonder, you know, how are they going to get help? There is opportunities and services here available right now uh, for them to, to get help. Uh, you can do that by calling toll-free, again, 800-992-2061. West Michigan CMH, they have somebody available 24 hours a day. Uh, so if you make that phone call, there's going to be somebody, there's going to be a live person to be able to talk to you and, and help you with that. And Mark, that is that first step, isn't it? It is. Just calling calling to get help can be the hardest step, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the most rewarding in the long run. Absolutely. And I can't encourage people enough or families enough to reach out and make that first step. All right. All right. We, that is the that is the plan. Let's let's get it. Uh, let's make it happen there. Uh, Mark, thanks for taking some time with us this morning. We would love to have you back on in the future. Okay. 
Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, it is 939 on 102.7 WMOM. More hits on the way, Doja Cat, as well as uh, we've got uh, Rachel Platten on the way, too, on 102.7 Mom FM. Unbelievably good music. Whoa, wow, 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 wow. 102.7 WMOM.